Welcome to the fifth edition of the Athens Roundtable on AI and the Rule of Law. This year in Washington, D.C., now a center for AI policy. Following previous editions last year in Brussels, pertinent during the AI Act, and then online during the pandemic, and the first edition in Athens, Greece, the birthplace of democratic institutions. I'm Yolanda Lanquist, Director of Global AI Governance at the Future Society, an independent nonprofit with a mission to align AI through better governance. We specialize in AI governance and policy to ensure that AI systems are safe, ethical, and aligned with fundamental human values. We're excited to gather here today and tomorrow in an urgent dialogue around the most pressing topics in AI governance through the lens of the rule of law. This event is live streamed online, so a warm welcome to our online audiences. Last year, we had over 100 uh, participants from over 120 countries, and we're very eager to expand the diversity and inclusivity, so thank you very much for joining us. We thank our co-hosts, the Institute for International Science and Technology Policy at the Elliott School of International Affairs at George Washington University, Special thanks to professors Nicholas Von Artas, Susan Ariel Aronson, and Christine Gilbert. NIST NSF Institute for Trustworthy AI in Law and Society, UNESCO, OECD, World Bank, IEEE, the Center for AI and Digital Policy, Homo Digitalis, and the Embassy of Greece in Washington, DC, which our event is under the aegis of. Thank you also for the continued support from the Patrick J. McGovern Foundation, which is key for our independence, and also to our supporting organizations taking leadership on legal aspects of AI, Paul Weiss, LLP, and Arnold and Porter. And also we want to recognize Nikki Iliadis, Director at the Future Society of AI and the Rule of Law, who is the queen of this event. Please engage with us on social media using hashtag AIAthens2023. Our agenda is packed, so apologies in advance if I do my best to keep us moving along. And so let's get the show started. It's my great honor to introduce first the president of George Washington University, President Ellen M. Granberg. Well, thank you, Yolanda, and, and hello, and good morning, everyone. Uh, it's, it's really an honor uh, to welcome all of you, both in person and online, to the George Washington University and the fifth edition of the Athens Roundtable. Today, we are so pleased to be joined by members of Congress and the European and Tanzanian parliaments. We have representatives from the World Bank, UNESCO and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and we have industry leaders, researchers, legal scholars, and civil society experts. Every one of you brings unique and important perspectives and expertise to our discussions, and you'll play an important role in the development of AI governance solutions now and in the future. On behalf of GW and all of our co-hosts, I want to thank you for taking the time to be here and to participate in these really critical conversations. The George Washington University is very pleased to be co-hosting this year's roundtable. Our institution has a tremendous legacy of impact across a broad range of disciplines. GW produces some of the highest levels of traditional scholarship within higher ed, something we're very, very proud of. But we're not an institution that is content with just publishing scholarship and hoping someone else will decide what to do with it. What makes GW unique is the way in which we extend our scholarship to direct applications across education, policy, patient care, and other areas. The university's location in the nation's capital, combined with its diverse and highly talented faculty, can connect science, technology, and innovation with law, policy, and ethics like very few other institutions can across the globe. 
Together, our students and faculty are working to find real solutions to some of society's most pressing challenges, and they're taking full advantage of emerging opportunities in technology and innovation. For example, faculty at the Institute for International Science and Technology Policy, which is located in GW's Elliott School for Internet, excuse me, for International Affairs, and the co-organizers of this event are catalyzing connections among scientists, policy experts, government officials, and industry leaders, driving groundbreaking research on critical science and technology issues, including that of artificial intelligence. We all know that the field of AI is rapidly transforming the world around us, impacting every aspect of our lives. In just the last year alone, we have seen dramatic advances in AI's ability to change how we learn, communicate, work, and administer healthcare. As we move forward, the fairness, accountability, transparency, safety, and security of AI needs to be at the core of the policies and laws that will govern it. Meetings such as this are key to achieving that goal. At GW, we are deeply engaged in this work. Uh, one example is the National Science Foundation Institute for Trustworthy AI in Law and Society, or TRAILS, which GW co-leads. TRAILS focuses on the ethical and societal considerations of AI and explores how to build future systems that deserve to be trusted by the people who use them and who are affected by them. By breaking down disciplinary silos and bringing together experts from across institutions, we're helping to lead the way to a future in which technology enhances, improves, and protects the human experience. And we know this roundtable is an important partner in that work. We're all here today because we know the AI revolution presents incredible opportunities to build a better and brighter future. But we're also here because we recognize that the inherent challenges and risks associated with AI and their implications for the rules of law and governance are inter interconnected and highly complex. To take full advantage of AI and all of its benefits safely and responsibly, we have to work together not just across academic disciplines within our own institutions, but across industry, academia, government, and the nonprofit sector. The Athens Roundtable represents an important opportunity in that effort. It's a unique time where we can work together and learn from one another. It's a chance to develop new ideas, to share your knowledge, and to build partnerships that can lead to bold new solutions to impactful AI governance. I want to thank you all again for joining us, for sharing your expertise, and for ensuring that all voices and perspectives are heard in these important dialogues. I look forward to learning more about the outcomes of the meeting, and I look forward as well to the opportunity to engage with all of you in the future. Uh, thank you as well to our co-hosts for making this event a possibility. I particularly want to extend a thank you to the Future Society, who's been a critical leader in supporting and organizing these Athens roundtables. So in conclusion, welcome to the George Washington University and my very best wishes for what I know will be a successful and impactful conference on this critical topic. Thank you very much. It's also my great honor to introduce next Her Excellency Ekaterini Nasika, Ambassador of the Hellenic Republic to the United States. So, good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. A Greek, you, uh, you must have expected a Greek today uh, <laughs> among you. So, um, dear friends, I'm delighted and honored to be here with you today as the Ambassador of Greece to the United States, addressing the Athens Roundtable, a forum founded under the patronage of uh, the Presidency of the Hellenic Republic and presented in Washington this year under the edges of the Embassy of Greece. 
I extend a warm welcome to all of you, of course, and uh, I want to recognize and congratulate the institutions that have made this conference possible, including UNESCO, the OECD, the World Bank, the standard setting body IEEE, and George Washington University, on whose premises uh, we are gathered today. All of you have come together to exchange ideas, insights, and expertise on artificial intelligence, which challenges us to embrace innovation while making it necessary to establish safeguards to protect us against undesired or unanticipated ramifications. Greece, a country with uh, a rich legacy of philosophical inquiry, scientific discovery, and cultural achievement, understands and values the potential of artificial intelligence and recognizes that it is a transformative moment in humanity's evolution. But as with all technological advances and as the world navigates the boundaries between technology and ethics, Greece also appreciates the challenges that accompany this venture into uncharted territory. One important, if not definitive, concern is AI's impact on the institution of democracy. Democracy and the rule of law are precious commodities and it is our obligation to ask whether they are compatible with artificial intelligence. On the one hand, it is possible that artificial intelligence can help improve the democratic process. It can help citizens gain a better understanding of politics and enable them to engage in the democratic debate. On the other hand, it may pose risks to the institutions of state and democracy, providing opportunities for misinformation and manipulation, among other risks. Greece, recognizing these challenges as well as opportunities, is taking action to prepare for this venture. Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis recently established an artificial intelligence advisory committee comprising top tech, ethics, and science professionals from Greece as well as from the Greek diaspora, placing at its helm MIT professor Konstadinos Daskalakis. The mission of this advisory committee is to create a national strategy and prepare Greece for the developments and applications of this groundbreaking technology. As we enter this uh, developing technological era, conferences uh, such as the Athens Roundtable can play a vital role in navigating through this exploratory phase of artificial intelligence and hopefully bring about greater understanding of its advantages and pitfalls. Please accept my best wishes for productive and fruitful deliberations over this very important topic. May this conference be a source of enlightenment, fostering collaboration and understanding. So I extend my sincere congratulations to the organizers and participants for contributing to this great conversation on a topic that does and will undoubtedly have a major impact on our lives and humanity's progress. And I thank you all very much for participating and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very, very much. For opening remarks, we'll hear next from Nicolas Miai, president and founder of the Future Society. Good morning. Last year, when we met in Brussels, almost exactly a year ago, we were just beginning to see the ChatGPT revolution. And just one short year later, oh boy, so much has happened. 
In just one short year, we've seen a reckless race unleash its power with a new economic paradigm in sight. We've seen tens of billions of dollars invested into this technology. We've seen dozens of powerful foundation models released along with an emerging set of tools that can transform these powerful models into very capable agents. In just 12 months, we've seen compute infrastructure scale these models and tools into our very hands. And crucially, we have seen hundreds of millions of daily users demonstrating indeed industrial scale demand. In short, we have entered, I will claim, into the age of industrial AI with in front of us an emerging value chain. All that while less than two years ago, the consensus was that conversational agents, i.e. chatbots, were filled in shambles. I think all of that speaks to the need for all of us to be humble in making predictions, of course. Particularly when we utter words such as never. Well, don't despair, by the way. Flying cars are around the corner, finally, too. We've been waiting for a long time for these ones. In the course of a year, we have also witnessed the alarm call being raised by a large majority of experts, many of which and whom are in the room today. And thank you for being with us this morning. The alarm called over the extreme risks caused by these models and the need to urgently build a future-proof institutional and regulatory framework and mechanisms to govern their accelerated rise. We have also seen this now famous open letter led by the Future of Life Institute, which gathered over 30,000 signatures. I proudly signed it. According to many of us who spend most of their time studying these advanced foundation models, such as GPT-4, Claude 2, and the likes, state-of-the-art models like these exhibit disturbing, emerging proto-capabilities, potentially in reasoning and planning, which make me and a lot of us believe that we have in front of us artifacts to govern that are beyond simply stochastic parrots. And though, and though we cannot still define it precisely in scientific terms, we're probably much closer to AGI, artificial general intelligence, that we think. Things are moving fast. And I'm therefore extremely happy that Joshua Bengio has been appointed as the outcome of the Bleachley Park Summit uh, in the UK that took place earlier this month, has been commissioned to write a collective report on the state of AI science, because we, we have an imperative, given the, the increasing polarization in our field, to better understand AI dynamics and its risks. Um, and now it's urgent uh, to help us better understand how close we are to crossing this existential threshold of AGI. I think we need to be humble there, and I'm happy that this, this is starting, and that could trigger an IPCC for AI process, which I have, which we at TFS have been calling for since 2016, 17, I think. Now, I'm sure you all have also followed the governance drama that, I've, that has unfolded last week around OpenAI. I think it confirms the enormous pressure and to some degree the panic about what the world is going through. Undeniably a turning point. Increasing further the polarization between the doomers and the boomers, between the accelerationists and the decelerationists, who believe that the move fast and break things approach will not work this time, because what we may break down is society itself, who believe that the ask for forgiveness and not for permission will be too dangerous this time if what we have to ask for forgiveness is the creation of new bioweapons. So let me be clear. If anything, I think this governance drama, uh, where a non-profit board decided to apply the safety bricks on its very turbo-capitalized for-profit subsidiary, has confirmed the need for foundation models development to face hard rules and regulation here in the US, in Europe, with hopefully the EUA Act, and beyond. Self-regulation will not cut it alone nor with soft governance like codes of conduct. Don't get me wrong, 
We need these instruments, but they will only deliver their intended consequences on the behaviors of developers and deployers and investors in these systems if they can ultimately rest on a future-proof, legally binding backstop adapted to the very nature of these models. They are potent, they're pervasive, and they are proliferative in nature. They seem to also now be more and more agentic, and they are still not interpretable, far from it, and certainly not robust. And so we have a lot of work to do, folks.